In this video, we'll determine the molecular geometry for BRF3. This is bromine trifluoride. So we start out with the Lewis structure. This is our Lewis structure for bromine trifluoride. We have the central bromine atom here, and we have these bonds, three bonds to the fluorine atoms. So those electrons there are shared, and we have covalent bonds. We also have these two lone pairs on top of the bromine. Bromine's an exception to the octet rule. It can have more than eight valence electrons. So that's okay for it to have that many. When we look at the Lewis structure, we can kind of imagine how these will all spread out, try to be as far away from each other as possible. But it's helpful if we look at a visualization for this. So let's imagine this is our central bromine atom here. And we're gonna add those three fluorine atoms. One, two, they spread out, three. So they're spread out as far away from each other as they can but we still have those two lone pairs. So let's add one lone pair. Again, we see it spread out, and then one more time. So at this point, when we look at the shape for BRF3, we can see we have these lone pairs here, and then we have this kind of T-shape. So this molecular geometry here is called T-shaped. If we looked at the electron geometry, we'd have to take into account the lone pairs here. We'd have something called trigonal bipyramidal. But let's go back to our Lewis structure. So again, we have our central bromine, we have three atoms, and then two lone pairs. So let's look at this table. So on our table, we have a steric number of five because we have those three atoms and those two lone pairs. So five things are attached to our central atom, and then we have two lone pairs. So steric number of five because we have five things attached, two lone pairs, and there it is. That's the T-shaped molecular geometry. If you're using the AXN notation to figure out the molecular geometry, A is the central atom, X, that would be these atoms here, and then N, that would be those lone pairs. So you'd have A, 3X, so X, 3, N, 2. So A, X, 3, N, 2, if you look that up on a table, you'll see that it is T-shaped for the molecular geometry. Back to our model, we would expect these bond angles here to be 90 degrees. However, these fluorine atoms, they're pretty electronegative. These lone pairs here, they push down a little bit more. So you wouldn't have 90, you'd have kind of 86, something like that around there. It would be less than 90 for these bond angles here. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.